Welcome back now to what will actually be the final round of Swiss. We've managed to sort the repairings out. Yeah. Uh, any uh, TOs out there who have experience with using the software, it can sometimes have a few issues, and that's what exactly, came up here. Yeah, and it seems to have been some quite complicated situation. Doesn't matter. Now we are back with what, round 14. We have a win, and actually, it's not quite a win. And Joel, uh, Joey, Joel, I, I just call him Joel. <laughs> He's playing Blasephalon, he's come he's from France, he's at 27 points and a win will guarantee top 8 for him. On the other side, Oscar Rivas on his 25 points, playing the Zapdos Girachi deck, so a win puts him in a bubble situation <laughs> yeah. where, where he can make top 8 but isn't guaranteed. Yeah, it's always a painful thing to ha experience of when if you have to be right on that bubble yeah. or you're relying on things like resistance I think it should be one person with 28 making it not yeah uh, yeah, yeah I think so when we I think it's to work it out. six people ID to a 29 or higher um, where we had to win in 27 versus 27 two good friends who didn't want to play each other so one just scooped Yep. So seven people confirmed, and the uh, eight one will be a twenty-eight point person. So Oscar. Might I think they're just waiting to set him. up. Um, they, they can they can set up whenever they're ready. Um, they can start yep. as well. But we'll see. Um, Changing over to their to the game. Now waiting for the players to do their setup to put on the prize. So I don't know if Joel or Oscar have ever been streamed before. It can be quite a daunting experience, especially on a winning in into yeah, top eight. Exactly. That's a horrible like, feeling. This is the, like <laughs> the worst in, time. Winning in into top eight is like one of the mo most prestigious positions. One of the most. It brings a lot of pressure. Yeah, like, there's a lot of stress, and then we go. Oh, by the way, also you're going to be like streamed. Yeah. And there was also exactly, a little delay, exactly. like because of the delay that makes it yes. you have to wait that little longer. You it know you're really on a winning in. Exactly. Like I thought, someone say there's only three placings in a tournament. Either you t win, <laughs> you top eight, or you don't top eight. That's and quite harsh. That's quite that's quite so a harsh these view players, on these things. These players are looking for a change from having them placing no top eight to having them placing top eight. So basically the same thing as everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> oh, top eight. I mean, it might be harsh. But I mean, that's has, not true for championship points. Yes, certainly. Um, but certainly in many ways it's not true. But from the prestige perspective, there's certainly something to it. So these players are looking for to bait, and yeah, it will be an interesting matchup which we haven't seen all weekend, and we probably most players don't have haven't seen much. Well, but the <laughs> basically disappeared off the radar yeah, exactly. with the release of the team upset because there's yeah. so many cards that made the uh, Ultra Necrozma, which kind of took its place. <sighs> exactly, faster. the Ultra Necrozma, such an aggressive, strong Pokemon, being able to consistently take those one shots. And basically doing what Blastephanon was doing, but doing it kind of more consistent, having more options, having the comeback of the GX attack, having the non apps route with a Giratina, being even able to take stuff like an Ace Roller. So Ultra Malama kind of replaced Blastephalon, but Joel bringing Blastephalon to the tournament and he's seeing a win and in situation, so speaking for him. Well, this is the thing, is that Mind Blown uh, is such a strong attack anyway. Certainly. It's very easy to hit absurd numbers with it and, and push through anything in front of you. Yes, and one big advantage as well is the Burst GX. So we often see the Malama decks being one price behind, having to come back, putting up these tanky attackers, these big one-shots, and Blacephalon on his first turn, he can just attach an energy, use Burst GX, draw that first prize, and set the pace for the game. It very much put, it says, right, okay, the prize lead is mine. You're going to have to work to try and take it back. Yeah. 180 HP is awkward for Zapdos Jirachi. Um, they do need many damage modifiers in play and, and or a few turns of having the Shrine of Punishment stick. Yeah, but it becomes quite tricky long term to continue finding these. You can take the first one, maybe. Uh, and also the Neganadels are not straightforward things to knock out. So the Zapdos decks have to work quite hard to keep yes. taking the prize cards. So here it will be interesting to see if going first will actually be an advantage for Joel because going first means that Oscar will have the opportunity to attack first. So both these decks are super fast, super aggressive. Like we thought Blasphemous is already crazy aggressive, but now we see that the Zapdos deck being able to oftentimes even add a Guzma to this early aggression and take out crucial knockouts with, and not just take a prize but also take something off the board. Well, from Joel's side, he's having a basically the dream oh start. My God. He this has his amazing. Absol out, so he can already yes. go, right, Oscar, slow down. Let's not start switching too easily. And he has three people out. 
which is going to cause a lot of issues because it means that Oscar doesn't really have any way of stopping mind-blown GX taking knockouts every single yes. turn. Yes, this absolute is a pretty is, is a very common tech I and mean, it's just such a powerful card. We've seen it over and over again. Zapdos players struggling to get Vegirachis out of the active, struggling to get this consistent attack, consistent attacks going because of that ability. And Joel having it right away to counter this usually perfect opening of Oscar. And Oscar on the other side going for an Ultra Ball right away, not even bothering to use the Ultra Space to check his deck because he knows that he wants to throw away these cards anyways. He had some time to think about it while Joe was setting up his perfect board. And now he's going for another Jirachi. So I can see a Zapdos just on the very, very yes. edge of the screen. You can just see the Zapdos peering in and a Jirachi next to it. Um, so the double Jirachi start for Oscar, hoping to use ideally double Stellar Wish. I think this turn yes. is what he's really looking for. If he can get into both, just so we can start getting through his deck, start finding his outs to retreat, and to make sure he can set up his Zapdos to take at least a prize this turn. Ideally, he want to take it on the Absol. The sooner he deals with this Absol, the sooner he can freely move his cards around. Because uh, I think there's only one Absol in the percent yes, list. Exactly. So an interesting thing to see is what Oscar will be able to do. He has an escape rope, so this is of course great. This is one of the situations where escape rope comes in really good because all of the Pokemon on Joel's bench are legitimate targets. He doesn't have anything, but he could sign up to tank a hit. It's all small frail Pokemon of this important Absol tech. And Oscar having revealed that he has a that he has an electro power in his hand already shows that he can take a knockout on Absol and Joel on the other side decides that he won't need that many Piper that he can afford to give up one of them. So Oscar there using the Ultra Space at the end of the turn just going right before I take this knockout I just want to confirm what options I have available. I had a quick look through on the Ultra Ball but I, I don't want this to be a... Like he know Oscar is from the start he cannot afford a tie. He has to win. Yes so exactly. So he's probably going I just want to do things quickly and just always yeah. have another look. Both these players will have to balance time and pressure here because none of them wants to tie. Like Joel might, might be okay with a tie, going to 28 still has a chance to bubble in but he certainly wants this win to guarantee top 8. Oscar on the other side has a bit more pressure, wants the win but really both players will be wanting a win here. Well Joel also wants to, tr like, both of them will want to win into the top 8 because it helps them with their seedings. Exactly. Um, it in theory helps you out a little bit. Um, especially with a few of the players who've made uh, top eight so far that can confirmed are and playing decks that both of these people would probably rather avoid. Um, and Joel, Joel, I mean, he will certainly be prepared for the Zapdos matchup, right? You can't go into this tournament thinking, hmm, let's just dodge Zapdos, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I mean if I had tried to do that this weekend, I'd have failed horribly because it's been on basically every other round. Yes, um, it's just so popular, <laughs> played by. Feels like everyone, different variations, but still the Zapdos Jirachi core. It's just so strong, so versatile. No wonder that so many players are playing it and that it, even in the latest rounds of the, this tournament, we are still seeing Zapdos going strong. And Cynthia for Joel. Having yes. the bench the Tapu Lele, exactly. not ideal. Exactly, not, not exactly ideal, but on the bright side, he will be using his GX Pokemon to trade here anyway. So in this price exchange, he has lots of GX Pokemon. So he will be attacking with Blacephalon usually, so there are GX Pokemon on the board. And this Lele yeah. is, is of course a liability, but it's not... Well, it's only 10 board. extra HP. Yeah. It's really not that big yeah, exactly. of a difference. And yeah, a big thing in this matchup will be the stadiums. Jowell using the first stadium means that he's in the sta so-called stadium or in the disadvantage. So Oscar has technically more stadiums left in his deck to um, replace it. Um, I just I have a quick look through the list, uh, neither of which are in English. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder how many Shrine of Punishments Oscar is playing, because the Shrine is an important factor. If he's able to consistently replace those stadiums, the Shrine damage might end up might end up adding up and leading to big one-shots on some GX, turning the price trade even more into his advantage even after going first. It might be zero. Really? Now yes. That, now that's something crazy. Oh, oh it's one. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. He doesn't play the straight Zapdos very No, he has he the Zeror and the Jolteon. Jolteon. Oh, okay. So this isn't the straight Zapdos deck. This is the Zapdos Jolteon deck, which doesn't play the Shrine of Punishment because it plays multiple GX on its own. Um. So instead of a Shrine, 
What might turn the price trade into Oscar's advantage is the Jolteon. It's GX attack, allowing you to be untouched for the, uh, the entire turn, being able to pick up a knockout with it, and being Im and having immunity for the next turn might come in huge in the later part. Of the but it game. also means that he can reach this 180 damage Safety. for the Blacephalon far easier. Yes, but it also means that Blacephalon has targets he can one shot. Uh, because one shotting GX Pokemon, taking big knockouts on them, taking those double prizes, this is what Blacephalon really does best. It really is basically what the deck is designed for exactly. uh, to take the big knockouts as quickly as possible. And having many GXs in play forces Oscar at this point to kind of go down the Zapdos route. She's playing a 4 3 Jirachi Zapdos uh, yeah, line. So he, so he has the option to go for the single prize attackers, and which is what we're seeing early. And because of the fact that he can set up the Jolteon with Thunder Mountain in a single turn to go into the GX attack, he knows he can take a few turns to set himself up, try and get some chip damage in with the Zapdos uh, on the Bicephalons, and then later on go into the GX attackers when he's already pretty and sure he's set up. Interestingly here, jo after Joel's one shot, Oscar does not respond with an attack. He seems to have only a single card in his hand, so not much going on for him, and he opted to not attack. Oh, he can't attack last turn because of the Absol, of course. So, he's stuck there, <laughs> he can't attack, he only has a single card, so this is looking pretty bad for Joel. He already lost lost tempo, so Joel, uh, Joel is, will be ahead, Oscar on the back foot here, this Blacephalon Naganadal deck showing why it has been so strong in the past, showing that it still is a top contender in the matter. So, Joel only has to just, uh, send one energy from uh, his... Uh, from play to the loss of the care of the Jirachi because of the fire weakness and he also gets the heat factory so he can get even more resources more options he can use to keep the two energy on the mind uh, for mind blown on the Blacephalon and just recycle the one this uh, this way the heat factory being a huge cut for those fire decks being such amazing consistency I remember testing Gardevoir with Robin and uh, the guard was one part and yeah we were like oh I hadn't kicked him already uh, originally, so Blacephalon put on Heat Factory, and I was like, oh, this is so unfair, you have a Swamp Heart as well. <laughs> it's so strong. And yeah, so replacing this Heat Factory will be a huge thing for Oscar. Don, does he play any other? He probably plays Thunder Mountain. He is has the Thunder Mountain, but I think it's just that one. It's just his only stadium. Uh, so I'm assuming that's uh, Vir uh, Viridian Forest oh, okay. as well. So he has two stadiums to replace with Heat Factory, and he certainly wants to do it as fast as possible, because Joel is already ahead of the price trade. He has this heat factory and a Blacephalon with a heat factory on the board usually means that he will never ever with any knockout. So he does have the KO on the Absol this turn. So yeah, this is um, of course nice for him. He wants to run smooth. He needs to keep up with those Blacephalon and he will need a lot of Jirachi abilities because he will have to make a comeback here. And what, what best to do a comeback with other than the Electro Powers. Good. So having multiple of those, having multiple damage multipliers and taking a big knockout on a Blacephalon is really what Oscar's looking for. Well, especially now being... He's still even on prizes at, at this stage, but it's only going downhill. He still yeah. has a hand of, I think, one card after that. Uh, yeah. And at this point, it's just a case of attach a single energy. That Zapdos is gone and you have a Jirachi and whatever card you just took off your prizes. Yeah, and Joel having freedom to do what he wants, having this heat factory, this incredible effect that increases your hand size by two, being now in <laughs> three range as well, putting more energy onto the board. This, of course, opening up the option for for Tapu Koko Prism, uh, for Tapu Koko GX play. Tapu it is already in Oscar's discard pile, but he, of course he's playing Rescue Stretcher, so he can bring it back. However, but there'll be no energy left on the board, and yeah. you would have to find a way to get to exactly. the Prism Star and an attachment to be able to do so. Yes. Also, it would mean that he would use the GX attack, and it's probably not the GX attack of his choice, because he wants to use this Jolteon GX attack to come back into this game. So, a lot of energy on the board for Joel, uh, the three on the Blacephalon. There's actually an argument here to make sure you uh, go way past the 110 to prevent the Coco, even if it is a mi yeah. million to one out. But, uh, but, but actually, I think here he doesn't need to. He can just yeah, discard the three. It's not the like three. the Coco brings or does much for Oscar because Joel will just have a return knocker and take two more prizes and then he, he would go down to a single prize card, which and would be very strong for him. Also, oh, the could, second beast ray. He could also use Naganadal 
to take a knockout on Coco because he's going down to three this turn. Meaning that next turn his Naganado will attack for one will be able to attack for 160. And with a choice band that would be enough to knock out a top Coco. So Joel <laughs> having and all another the B string. <laughs> that is a triple B string turn. <laughs> this is really what these the Cephalon decks are famous for. Getting all these B strings in a single turn, getting all these energies into play and being so threatening. Really Having is one of one shots ready for later. Most powerful cards printed in a yes. long time. It basically says to your opponent, if you take prize cards, which most people want to do at some point in the game, it tends to be how people it tends to be how you win Pokemon games. I'm just gonna punish you by just freely grabbing energy out of my deck, having a single turn where I can hit all of it, and I will win. Yes, and he's debating which energies to put into the Lost Zone. Putting away one of his Blacephalon and two of Bench Neck Nadals, keeping his Blacephalon ready to attack. And that Next poor Jirachi is currently staring down a very scary board. The only thing that's left for Oscar, <laughs> and he finally finds a Lily, draws six new cards. I didn't having nothing see... but the Jirachi and the six new cards. I, well, I actually the fact that there was anything. the fact there was no nest ball before this Jirachi means yeah. there's no basic. There's no out to the basic. He's looking for one here. And oh, he does we see have it. The nest ball. And look, going for the Zapdos straight away. Yeah, that is very much a having to find something to even stay in this game. Um, even coming in here and hitting for the 80 uh, without having to attach is not going to really help too much. So there's another Pokemon on the bench as well. So he took another. Um, he did, did manage to get to something, but he has a switch. He has a switch, so he will be able to attack this turn. He has the Thunder Mountain, so he doesn't even need an energy. He also has another Zapdos on his bench, I believe. And the far left corner it's visible. Might be Blitzel or something. No, actually, I don't think he plays Blitzel. Oh, it might be an Eevee, actually. It could be the Eevee. Yeah, it looks very much like an Eevee. Um, and yeah, he's attacking for 80. Joel on the other side opts to retreat, realizing that he's at free prizes, being able to recharge those energies directly onto his Nidic And yeah, he will be able to take the knockout with a non GX and a quite bulky one. 130 HP, certainly a lot, dealing 160 damage. The GX attack is still available for Joel, so he will go down to two prizes after this turn. Still having the GX attack, being ahead, two prizes. Having a damaged Blacephal on the, on the board, but even if Oscar's able to even the prize amount out, um, Joe will have a turn advantage. Yeah, it's so what snowballing Oscar, out of control because Oscar now is really yeah. having to find something. What Oscar needs here is a knockout on the, is a Guzma and a damage mo modifier plus the Zapdos and an energy to take a knockout on this Blacephalon, going down to two prizes, and then he would be able to. Maybe use something like Tapu Koko, Prism Star plus Tapu Koko GX. He could also look to attach to the uh, EV on the bench, evolve it into the Jolteon GX, Guzma out the Blacephalon, take the KO with the GX attack. Because that yes. buys him another turn. This would help. Um, but he would need the Tapu Koko Prism Star first for it. And yeah. But uh, no, because the Thunder Mountain in play. He oh, yeah. The energy, so yeah, so yeah, he don't yeah, need the sure. attachment to evolve. Sure, also it saves the damage multiplier. Yeah, but definitely would be a good play. But I don't think he has access to it, otherwise. He, but it would also mean that the GX attack would not be available for him anymore. So, well, well, also, well, the thing is, is that with the GX attack still available for Joel, the turn that uh, Oscar, if he uses the Jolteon GX attack, Joel just uses his GX attack. Exactly. But the thing is that if Oscar takes out this damage plus Ephalon and is able to get a big knockout next turn, he will take four prizes in these two turns. So what he, so he really needs some way. Well, what he mostly needs is a Guzma. He can use Jolteon, he can use Zapdos and Electro Power. Yes, from that he has an Electro Power in his hand. Got it with the Jirachi. Not quite sure what he is in his hand. It does not look like a Guzma to me. Okay. I think it's an. I think he has an. <laughs> Joel having to double check is like, wait, and your yeah, energies are golden. Is this also an energy? He's only playing a Lily here. This is really not what he wanted to see. Uh, he did play an electric power earlier in the turn, so if he has a way of uh, switching and um, still, he can still take a knockout, but it would only be a single prize knockout uh, on the Nagandel. Unless he can get into. But you know, there's no way that Joel would give him anything other than a single prize this turn. Uh, and. Then Joel would only need to either find a Guzma of his own or perhaps uh, yeah. use he could his own just GX attack. Use the GX attack going down to one prize and being ready to take a knockout next turn as well. 
for his last try. Uh, so even with turning point, he could take out one of the Jirachi fairly yeah, easily. Exactly. So it does look so like this, this game is pretty grim for yeah. Oscar. He might still win, maybe if he takes it with Naganadal. And with a Jolteon's GX attack, when Joel would use his GX attack in return, and then maybe Oscar could take a knockout and hope that Joel doesn't have enough energies left anymore. Because currently, there's only because after this knockout, there would only be one Naganadal left in play for him. But it's certainly looking very bad, and he might want to consider to scoop it up, go to game two, He's just and try sleep to take flip. a toe. And he, oh, this is just terrible for him. The sleep flip here is Guzma. Yeah, Egg Guzma on the Eevee. Switches. Switches into Naganadal. Basically being a free retreater thanks to the ability. So he can just charge the, ability, uh, the energy he discarded for a retreat right up again. Takes the knockout on the Eevee. Having an energy, having two Naganadal, uh, two Blacephalon with energies and his GX attack available. So there's no way for Oscar to prevent Joel to win next turn. Yeah. All Joel will do. And yeah. He's declare his GX attack and that will be the end of game one. Yes. Oscar might be overlooking it, still thinking about but no, he's scooping it up. 32 minutes left for two more games for Oscar to maybe make a comeback, maybe get two more wins. Yeah, it's very much going to be a uphill battle for him now because yes. he has to win two games on, in a row against a deck that is just so aggressive yeah, that it just doesn't give you time. Exactly. And we saw also one of those games Joel will have opportunity to choose whether or not he wants to go first and yeah but Joel sitting here comfortably after his amazing turn one if you remember the Cephalon absolute <laughs> triple triple ability and it was just so amazing he got everything he needed and he went aggressive he got both knockouts and Oscar really struggled to keep up with it. Well, Joel used his turn one. He capitalized on having the very aggressive start by basically putting Oscar on a very short timer. Exactly. Where his deck, mostly the way he, uh, Joel, uh, that Oscar wants to kind of play this game is to use his single prize attackers, but they can't take the one hit knockouts. He, Joel goes, right, okay, but you have six turns because I'm taking a prize every turn this way. And you yeah. can't do the same. And uh, it makes it very difficult. Also, Oscar yeah. did have a very slow generally, start as well. Generally, Oscar would have the opportunity to just go for two shots all game and then maybe one one shot for the last two prizes to, like, I mean, a two shot for a one shot if you use non GX attackers is totally fine for you, right? It's just. Yep. I you, mean, it's, yeah, it's even on it's the even, price track. Exactly. Trade. And then you can use this last turn to take the advantage, take a double knockout, win your opponent, win, yeah, to win the price race. But yeah, let's see if Oscar will go for opt will opt to go first or if he will go second. Uh, I don't know who won the original coin flip, but Joel went first last time and it worked out well for him. So Oscar might want to go first, decide to build up his board, risking that Joel might get a turn one burst GX, but it's not even that likely. He he would need to open with Burst Cephalon for it. He only plays three actually, so it's rather likely that he doesn't open it. Uh, and I think Oscar will need this time to set up. So we see three lightning energy in the, in prize. the prizes for Oscar of his eight. That means Definitely. that it's going to be considerably more difficult to set up his attackers this game. Because I see double Poipo, I believe. It is opening Jirachi going first. Uh, and against the Absol. There was a choice band immediately played to something on the bench. I'm assuming that's a Zapdos. Yeah, he absolutely already being in place, of course, nice for Joel, but the active position is not where you want to have it because a switch and an electro power and it will be gone, allowing Jirachi as skateboard engine to run freely. Yeah. Oscar using an ultra ball, discarding a Lily right, right away, so he will most definitely have another one in his hand. Lily, just the supporter you want to see turn one, being able to draw eight cards, and yeah, being up to eight. And yeah, he's searching out Zapdos, attaching an energy to an Eevee, I believe, using energy evolution, evolving it into <coughs> Jolteon right away and having a choice band as well. So preparing that for a bigger knockout. Uh, it was actually interesting to note that last game Oscar attached and did not evolve because he knew that the Jolteon would be under immediate threat. Yes. Uh, this game, because he's going first and Joel has nothing on the board, he can get the bulky uh, stage 1 GX out. And he knows that he can probably take KOs with it whilst waiting, or yeah, whilst Joel, Joel is setting up, and that just means that he can kind of stay ahead in the prize trade for a couple of turns. 
Yeah, and he's ultra balling again, discarding one of the few lightnings he has. But of course, he can bring those back. And he's searching out his own elf though, which means that the drone will have a hard time getting this Abdul out of the active position. And it will be relatively likely for Oscar to get a knockout on it in his next turn. He's also searching out the Tapu Koko Prism Star. So he can accelerate both energies he discarded earlier back. Yeah, he's going to be at the point of having two attackers ready to go with both the Jolteon and the Zapdos ready uh, to attack, which means that Joel has multiple threats to deal with and very little to do the, th that with. Yeah. Oscar's bench slightly off camera here, but thankfully we can quite clearly make out what's going on. All of the Pokemon at least slightly visible and yeah, it's pretty obvious which one's which. So the low visibility doesn't really matter too much. And on the other side, Joel having the Ultra Space again, turn one. This is of course a really nice card, it allows him to check his deck and it allows him to search out all of his important Pokemon. He can get Blocephalon, he can get Poipols, he can get NTF. Oscar doesn't manage to replace it, he can use this Ultra Space next turn again to set up very uh, nicely. He's taking a rather long look here figuring out what's in his prizes. There are two Poipol there, he's playing the full 4-4. Four, four. Uh, he's playing a full 4-4 four, four line of um, the Naganadal, so the two Poipols on the prizes don't hurt him too much. But of course, not exactly what he wants to see. So, Bocephalon in play. The Ultra Space, very useful stadium, because it yes. can grab you not just the basics, exactly, but and the evolutions as you go. Unlike things like Booklet Hill, the other search stadium that people play only really puts things straight to the bench, so it's basics. And here yeah, he's going straight away for a Blacephalon, using um, a mysterious treasure for a Poipol and another mysterious treasure for another Poipol right away. And double fire energy in the and discard. Yeah. Having mysterious treasure means he had access to Tapolela, so he probably has a pretty good support in his hand already. I'd guess it's a Lily. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a Cynthia as well for the Lilies, however, certainly what he wants to see on his first turn. Uh, just having a look at what he's playing. He's playing Eric, two, uh, two copies of Erica's Hospitality. Uh, oh yeah, three. It's actually a pretty good support here as well, allowing yeah. him to draw six cards. But, but he yeah, had it the Lily. Is the Lily drawing him seven cards, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah. That's a really aggressive. <laughs> he's already having his bot as set up as possible for him because of the two Poipol in his prize card. So, but if Oscar is able to find a lightning energy uh, for the Zapdos and a Guzma to take out one of these Poipol, exactly. he is this only going to have to survive the whole game with only exactly. the one Naganadel. Seeing, seeing that Poipol is so vulnerable, Oscar might definitely might certainly go for a knockout on it. It's not only an easy knockout, but it also hurts Joel a lot because he will always have to discard three energies and lost zone three energies to take a knock on a Zapdos, which is quite a lot. So Last game we saw him at three B string in a single turn, so he had no issues at all with his energies. Yeah, that doesn't happen every game. Yeah, I've played exactly. enough Blessed Athlon to know that. To be yeah. honest, when I played it, it never really ever happened. <laughs> um, yeah. But with this now, and we can see a Volcano coming to play. And he already had an electric power from earlier, so he might go for a switching card for a switch if he not, doesn't already have one. Taken will be taking a knockout on this app though. So he could also consider if he has the choice band he yeah. has one electric power already, right? So yeah. there's a, uh, he could, could have also taken escape rope, He could have yeah. gone for the escape rope because he either deals with a poipol or hits some very big damage on the Blacephalon yeah. to, to weaken it up Would for later. It would certainly be a very strong turn if he managed to get escape rope. Joel sending up Blacephalon thinking it's safe and then getting Jolteon. But even if he didn't take the full KO, he could put yeah. it close enough that the Jolteon's 30-30 uh, later on would be able to but finish yeah. it off. But Oscar's just taking the knockout on the Absor. The disruption gone. This time Oscar and the prize lead. Having a Jolteon in the backseat already. Be getting rid of Joel's disruption. So he has... He has this ready... Um. <laughs> Some quick changes of the overlay, <laughs> looking much better now <laughs> than it just did, when it did a second ago. And yeah, this time it's looking pretty good for Oscar. He got rid of his Absol, so his Jirachi engine is able to work, function properly as yes, the backseat. Yeah, he's Jolteon now with free it. to do as he needs to do to keep exactly. finding the cards. Uh, the Jolteon already ready to go as well means that 
he is able to take a KO on the Naganadels fairly easily. He doesn't need as many damage modifiers this time around. Yep. Um, or he could even opt to do something along the lines of Guzma, something up into the active position, for, um, and then use the Jolteon to hit 30-30. Yeah. To guarantee the KOs for later on if he needs them. Yeah, he could use this 30 30 attack to soften up some the Cephalons, putting the Strolty on a danger, but then being able, maybe being able to pick up easy KOs with the Zapdos and with just a few damage modifiers. But yeah, I think it's most likely we will see. Oh, also, this Tapulele is also easy prey for the Jolteon. It already has a choice band, so a Guzma, an energy, and an electro power it would mean that he could take an upward on the Tapulele. Potentially with the GX attack, even putting himself into putting immunity on himself and going even further ahead in this prize. Well, it, being a, if he has the ac option to do that, he takes the double prizes, so can kind of swing the price trade further in his favour, but also have a very high tempo turn of going right. Okay, we're we're immune. But this is something you can do about this. But we're seeing the field blow up from Joel. Not the biggest deal, but certainly helped. The choice went from Oscar being gone, one damage modifier less on this Jolteon, it will be harder for him to get those big one shots on GX Pokemon. And if this Jolteon doesn't have his GX attack anymore, if it doesn't have modifiers to take one shots, it's basically a liability for Oscar because it will be an easy knockout for Joel once he gets more Blastephanon to play, once he gets B strings going and energy is accelerated, he can take. He can use Guzma to pick up the Jolteon for some easy prizes to go ahead in the price range. The issue here is if he has the time to do that before Oscar is able to kind of push too far ahead. Yeah. Having used the GX attack early to take the single prize. Yeah, Oscar will certainly look to get value out of his um, Jolteon before this happens. Meanwhile, Joel not having the knockout here, using the burst GX instead. And actually hitting an energy, which yeah, doesn't happen the very one, often. Luckily hitting the one energy in his prizes. Helping him to set up his board to prepare for later knockouts. Yeah, four energy already in play for Oscar means that if uh, uh, for, for Joel means that if Oscar wants to here, he could actually go for the Tapu Koko GX. Um, he can. He has uh, energy already in play. But and we see the Guzma on the Tapu Lele and GX just for the attack, just, just for one ten without damage modifiers. So the field blower turning out to be quite big because otherwise this Tapu Lele would have been at one forty meaning that the first attack of Jotion would have been able to pick up the knockout while also softening up the Blacephalon. So with the 110 being done here, it does mean that it's kind of easier to cater with the Zapdos later on. Yes, certainly. But it also means that uh, if the Jotion ever getting to use the uh, first attack, you can also, also finish the, the game also out. The burst GX being gone means that Joel doesn't have the easiest out to this. However, this Tabulele currently has to retreat, so he couldn't have retreated it anyways. He needs a Guzma this turn if he wants to take a knockout. Yeah, instead, he's having to start off using Ultra Space to grab another Blessephalon from his deck. Uh, as lo the longer this uh, card stays on the field, uh, the more times Joel is able to keep searching and setting up his board. Uh, he yes, knows board. that he can't take any more Poipoles because they're all in his prize cards, <laughs> but he can basically get to that stage where, okay, right, I have many Blacephalon to deal with, you have to find a way of dealing with it in one of these uh, turns. The Ultra Space is really an amazing card for this Blacephalon deck. Basically an upgraded Brooklatil, because Brooklatil only gets you basics, while Ultra Space also gets you your neck and needles once you need them. Uh, it gets you Blacephalon, gets you Poipot. Just such an amazing card, if it sticks, it is one of these cards like Heat Factory. Blacephalon tends to develop a really strong board once it manages to get enough and uh, once the stadiums stick in play because they get value of it every turn and both stadiums are just such amazing consistency boost. And here we see Joel searching out a Marshadow. Yeah. So it appears that he probably doesn't have a Guzma in his hand yet. Doesn't have another Tapulila available to pick up a Guzma. So using the let loose He's just trying to work it out, like, okay, I have two retreat, I can't move this easily. Yes. How are we getting out of here? And that is basically Guzma or Bust for him now. Yes. So using Let Loose. No, no, he's actually going for Lily instead. Just using, um, just spinning his hand out a bit earlier. Uh, so, so, Joel will not be able to should not be able to retreat this Tapulila this turn, it has two retreat, he already attached an energy anyways. And so just he's passes. Looking, 
and he just passes. This Kuzma play from Oscar really paying off. Being able to take the knockout on Tapulele now without even having damage on the So if Whatever. he's able to get a choice band or a damage uh, here, he can KO the active Lele using oh. uh, electrical and set up uh, the, one of the Blacephalons for the KO. However, um, one thing soon after as well. we didn't mention is that it was quite interesting that Joe Oscar actually opted to use his GX attack last turn because this Tapulele couldn't retreat anyways. Seeing switch cards like switch in Blacephalon decks would be very unusual, so the only option to get this Tapulele out of the active position would be a Guzma, meaning that the Jolteon mm, would go true, through the bench anyways. True. So the GX attack was basically wasted for So, Oscar. free retreat from the uh, Jolteon, having dealt with the Absol already, taking the KO with the Zapdos, leaving only a single prize um, option available for Jol to take, uh, unless he has access to the Guzma, but the yeah. Guzma here would have to be Guzma for the Jolteon and just got a whole bunch of energy to try and kind of keep up at this stage. Um, yeah. We are in now, however, inside the Beast Ring window for Joel. Yeah. Uh, down and to three prize cards remaining exactly. for Oscar. Oscar's racing ahead here. Also, you could argue that he's playing it pretty safe because not using his GX attack might have been punished by something like energy. Like, I think he only had one energy on his Blacephalon. Uh, Joel had one energy on Blacephalon, so he would have needed two energy switch to punish this play, really. Mm -hmm. So he could um, switch one energy to Blacephalon, one to Layla, then attach to Layla, retreat, get a knockout on the Jolteon. So hard to punish, but Joel, uh, Oscar being ahead in prizes by two prizes already, thinking that, yeah, I can afford this, so I'm going to play it safe, just make sure that I don't lose prizes. And yeah, this Marsh Shadow trying to get some disruption going, but it also means an easy prize for Oscar later on. So now we see the Marsh Shadow that Joel took last turn, uh, using the Let Loose ability to shuffle and draw uh, both players' hands into their deck and they draw four cards. Yes. Uh, actually really helpful because at this stage, Oscar's going to need a combination of cards to take a response KO yeah, on the Blacephalon and he does manage to find the Beast Ring. Typically it's however a card we've seen early turns to disrupt your opponent's setup. Oscar however already has an attacker on his board. <laughs> double Beast Ring again! Easy. Man Shadow into four cards, hitting double Beast Ring off of it, having plenty of energies on his board. You can see Oscar's reactions here. <laughs> he's not amused, he does not like to see this. Uh, but he's still sitting in the driver's seat here. He just needs to take a, take a two shot on one of those plus on this active Placephalon. Then Guzman. There's a lot of energy in play. Game. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and there's also already two energy on the Jolteon, which means that a Tapu Coco GX here is on the order, I think, for Oscar, because if he can hit yeah. that, he comes I, in. He can't attachment. use the GX attack, however. Uh, he could use true. two damage modifiers true, to true. get the knockout anyways, with like choice band and, but, oh, that is, this is huge. Joel didn't use his supporter for turn yet, and he hit the Guzma off the Heat Factory, being able to get a knockout on this Jolteon to even up the price count. I think he also discarded more energy than strictly speaking necessary as well. Uh, there. It was four, right? Uh, yeah, he would need four. Yeah, exactly. I think it was exactly four. Yeah, uh, I, I think it was. He just discarded So now, Tapu Koko <laughs> Prism being used. In order to attach the energy to the bench, you get one to the Absol, one to a Zapdos slightly off screen. Yeah. The, uh, the Tapu Koko GX is certainly something that Oscar would like to use this turn. Because he has now two energy in play, he needs a third one of course, but then with a choice band and an electro power he would be able to take the knockout, go down to one prize. Not that Marsh Shadow is looking exactly. awfully, awfully tempting if you were Oscar. Yes, exactly. So yeah, let's see if Oscar manages to get a one shot here and no, instead he opts to go for the Guzma right away. An energy attachment this turn would be huge, meaning that this Tapu Koko GX option is still open for him. But it doesn't look like it, so he would need his Thunder Mountain later on to be a, get attacking with uh, Tapu Koko GX. Alternatively, of course, he can just keep attacking with those Zapdos. And. Oh. Joe just having a quick look to see what he wants to promote. Also, interestingly, um, Oscar used for Tapu Koko Prism at the beginning of his turn. Accelerating energy to Arsenal and Zapdos. I'm not quite sure where, where he got the other Zapdos from. 
But with an energy on the air bicep, it certainly would have been nicer than on the abs. So this turn we will see turning point take the KO on the active Zapdos. Yes, forcing Oscar to, to find the Guzma to take two course. prizes. Um, the Ultra Beasts all having interactions with the uh, number of prize cards remaining or like, manipulating prize yes. cards in some way uh, mean that they're very difficult. To, uh, you have to plan around certain turns, decks that are able to take multiple prize cards in over a turn to kind of skip past these with, uh, these dangerous uh, yes. phases yes, are yeah. very taking, risky. Taking the knockout with a, with a non-GX of course means that Oscar doesn't get an easy attack into a Blacephalon, which is huge. So he would need a Guzma to promote a Blacephalon to attack it. But Joel is likely to just retreat that damage Blacephalon then and put up another one so he would need consecutive Guzmas and he already used a couple earlier so it, he might be running low on those he, he, I don't think he used it too much but he used it to bring up Tapulele, he used it to bring up Marshadow so it was it, it were quite a few so here the Cynthia so there's no Guzma yeah. this turn so the game is not over quite yet but what will happen here is uh, we're going to have to be careful be because yeah the turning point doesn't actually KO with Jirachi, naturally, so if <laughs> <laughs> because of the psychic resistance. So it's going to be a case of having to, if the Jirachi stays active, Joel will now need the Guzma instead yeah. uh, to try and seal so the yeah, game. Best, Oscar doesn't really need to attack this turn because even if he knocks that um, Naganado out, there's no real option for him to take an easy last prize. So what he wants is to attack those Blasephalons. Using an Electro Power there to draw more cards with Lily kind of, kind of is not optimal for him because he needs those, he wants those Electro Powers to potentially get a big knockout later on. Pretty sure he doesn't want to attack this turn. He used a supporter, won't have a Guzma this turn, so and if he's not attacking a Blastephalon, there's no point in attacking at all. So, how many uh, of fire energies has Joel been through because the, the ones on board and the ones he's already discarded he's been through quite a large number of them yeah but those on the board should certainly be enough to finish off the game no but it's if he goes so if Oscar is able to get the Blacephalon with only the one fire energy in active there's not that many of them left in the deck yeah, for him I don't to know attach he's playing typically Blacephalon decks play energy switch so he would I don't uh, I don't know if he does oh yeah he plays one yeah, energy switch so okay so there's still one there so he should be fine and he still has Guzmas of course so, and yeah, this, Jirachi wakes this up. This Marshadow, Double Beast, String, Guzma, Knockout on Jolty on turn from Joel, really turning around this game. Oscar losing his momentum, losing his advantage, and now building up to somehow find the last knockout on a Blacephalon. So, Joel, Joel can just retreat here, exactly. reattach that energy using charging up, and just take a knockout with the Blacephalon on the active Jirachi for basically nothing. Uh, and if he can also get an attachment on the other Blacephalon. He is more or less free uh, to basically take the series 2-0 because there's no real way Oscar is able to take the one-hit knockout without having access to an awful lot of damage boosts. Yeah, it's, it's not that much. He just needs one more energy. He has the Thunder. Uh, he do actually doesn't as long as the Thunder Mountain is in play. So just with Tapu Koko GX and two damage modifiers would be enough. And he can even use the Choice Band. So it's not that much asked. Mm -hmm. And here, yeah. Joel. Is making sure that Bersef that Jirachi is really KO'd. I, uh, is he maybe playing around the GX attack? But forgetting it's already been used. But Oscar already used his GX attack, so there's no real point in throwing away this many energy. One would have been the toughest. I mean, one would have then been more than enough. Uh, yes. That poor little Jirachi has a fire weakness. Yeah. And I think that was four energy being discarded, which meant that it just took uh, an awful lot of damage. Yeah, I think it's, it's been four, so it's. No, it was 400 be, damage yes, that Jirachi that's, just that's took. Certainly quite a lot. A very interesting play from Jirachi. I'm not sure what the reasoning is. Probably being afraid of a GX tank, for, forgetting that Oscar has used it. Unfortunate play, perhaps. Maybe I'm overlooking something on the other side, and Joel is just playing around something I don't think I could. I'm pretty of. sure he was playing around something that can't yeah. actually happen there, which is yeah. unfortunate. It, like, but it's a stressful situation. It's very easy to overlook things like that. Being willing to do this shows that he has the resources to win this game, anyways. 
he will have enough energy. I mean, basically, what he needs is one more energy, and he will be able to knock out anything, anyways. Yep. Uh, so it doesn't really matter too much at so this point. And here we see already one electro power on Oscar's side of the board. So he only needs one more damage modifier and the top of Coco GX. Uh, so escape board. That was retreated with some uh, some venom. That one. That was like get out of there. Oh, like and you're at risk. Um, oh, and it does not look like he has it. Choice band. He has choice band. He has electro power. Does he have the second? Is he slow but playing? He doesn't it? have top of Coco. So he's just attacking, and Joel is showing him that he has the energy he needs. He takes the knockout on the Zapdos, and he's taking the series 2-0. So that does now mean that we are looking at Blacephalon making it into top 8. I believe Crazy. it's probably the only one in top 32. I think it was when we looked through yeah. the uh, decks earlier I'm, on. I'm not sure it was either one or two, but certainly this, these Blacephalons have quite a good conversion rate. Yeah, well, it's... With 50 <laughs> or 100%. That's quite impressive. We rarely see any deck doing this. And yeah, we will have a Blacephalon in top 8. And in fact, we have enough time to have a quick chat with him. Oh, so, yeah. um, so let's hear from him. What, why did he make this choice? What he thinks about Blacephalon's position in the meta? But it's clearly think, worked out for him. Yeah, I mean, he, he showed that he knew the strength of the deck. He realized that it was still just as strong as it used to be before. It was still aggressive. Well, that's the thing, is that the deck didn't lose anything. Yeah. Other decks gained some things. So we'll have a chat with him uh, shortly, so stay yes. tuned, and uh, the interview will be up shortly.